so many places you can go. Just two games, but there's so many places you can go. I'm going to start on Friday night um, and the Collingwood win, but I'm going to talk about Jordan Dugowie in particular. Uh, I thought his performance was exceptional. He's a finals-type player, and he lived up to that um, that billing, and his coach was pretty happy with his Chargers performance as well. He is one of the best trainers. Is he? The, oh, absolutely. You And when we made the shift from doing running in pre-season to mm. just doing most of our work in competitive drills, he went to another level again. Because he just he loves to play, mm. he's, like he's probably the closest thing to to Swanee. Like he needs to be engaged and stimulated by playing. But that that performance was, I mean, thirty four touches, thirteen clearances. The one aspect of his game that I reckon comes to the fore in finals even more is the is the ability to break tackles. You can't tackle him. You can't tackle. I don't know. How, there would be stats out there, but he would have broken as many tackles as. Any player has in a game of yeah. footy. The other guys that do that, Toby Green, it breaks tackles really well. Obviously, Dustin Martin over the years has been I got a new almost one for impossible. You. Cam Rain is yes. another one. I got, yeah, got him right you here, got mate. me, eh? You so, got me covered. So these guys, these guys are the guys you need to watch for because what to go was able to do was break this tackle. Then another player has to come and pressure, and he was often getting through the second one. So he's beating two, and then a third would come to him, and he'd have two players mm. that he could put in the space. And what? The, yeah, that that's what it does. And and then it creates the overlap. So so that was where his his massive influence came mm. about in the game. I got another one. And you're for going it. from the inside to outside. Bucks. Who you got for Nick me? Nick Dacos is now a tackle breaker, and I reckon in the six weeks that he spent, I'm not sure whether he's worked hard on his strength. Because if he hasn't been able to you know, run, I think he's been in the gym. And he, he mm. broke, I reckon he broke three big tackles. Now, not in the same way that the goey does, but he's shimmy and he gets out of tackles as well. So that's why I think this grand final is interesting because McCluggage will take you on, try and break tackles. Neil will try and break tackles. Rainey, you've mentioned, will break tackles. Dunkley can do it. So the physicality that we have in this grand final will be enthralling as so, well. So on the flip side, to be able to stick those tackles yeah. is, is crucial as well. Uh, two for me is um, is the GWS Giants. I mean, I would be so impressed. Um, you know, anyone who's witnessed them, who's watched them go on their journey, like they were devastated afterwards, and you know why? Because they believed they were going all the way. It mm. didn't really matter what anyone else thought. They thought they were going the whole way. If if it, I, I'd, I'd be backing GWS to to be a danger in the next couple of years, you know, they've they've got enough experience there that but they've got some youth that are coming through. Their back six are, are, are what build what they build their game around. How good Iden? Iden had a massive last quarter. Sam Taylor, I've seen him become more uh, expressive with the way that he goes. He used to be so understated, and he's and he's been effective for a long period of time, but. His competitiveness and will to win just comes to the fore more and more as the game, as the, mm. the 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 pointy end of the season sort of continued in the final series and and uh, Jack Buckley was was huge as well just under pressure like I thought that their I thought their system was excellent um, I think they they probably missed some of the marginal calls that could have gone their way they set the game up the way they needed to after Collingwood looked like they had had um, their measure in the first quarter. Tom Green was probably a little off. He still had 31 touches, but a little off. thought he started well, and then some of his ball use wasn't to the level that um, it usually is. Callum Ward, who'd been really good for him in the back half of the year, was quiet. Um, yeah, Bedford was probably quieter than normal. They had a couple that, that had down days, but that happens in uh, finals. But they but they were able to cover. I, whatever What Adam Kingsley has done has been sensational. They've got a great list. It seems to be well balanced. I would be... It's just how you rebound from them. from the mental anguish, and I mean, you've lived it, mm. where you look back and you relive those opportunities that they had, and there would have been ten. So take the umpiring out of it. I mean, the playing on from advantage, Keith Hamble over the top to Green, Ash unpressured turnover which costs a goal. The one with Brown on the wing, he missed a couple of goals. Daniels missed an easy goal in the first quarter. They had so many. They did. Opportunities, and I thought they went into their shell a little bit where they just wanted to play long down the line in the last 10 minutes and they lost their dare. Seven intercept marks to one in the last quarter, and 
they just went long down and just lost a bit of that dare. So that, how you regroup when you get so close, but then you go back to pre-season, you go, we've got to do this all again and go one or two steps further is, is the mental part of that. Ironically, they won the game in the first quarter just by being able how? to hold up. Brisbane, uh, sorry, um, Carlton had 22 inside 50s, kicked five goals, one. But yeah, they only had six scoring shots from 22 insides. Mm. So to see Harris Andrews stand up, I thought Gardner's role on, on Cherno was huge. Starsevic and Leicester, the other two. What about Kitty Coleman? We Yeah, but not in the first quarter. No, we no. didn't see those boys no. because, and, and I'll talk about that later, because ultimately the, the back four were the ones that needed to do all the work. The ball was going over the top. But uh, Chris Fagan uh, has been strong on this the whole time about their lessons learned and their ability to handle that situation and not lose their heads. For the back four in particular deserves a lot of credit. Andrews, you know, stopped a lot of those um, scoring threats. Um, you know, I think, as I said, Stasevich is an underrated player for mine who who gets the job done really well. And um, I thought that Eric Hipwood's shot on goal late in that first quarter, yeah, you know, when it needed to be kicked. I mean, that was that's probably one of those moments that. That Fags is talking about where you've you've got you're a player now. He isn't a young player anymore, but he's been through the ringer. He's had plenty of circumstances. Just needed to kick that goal mm. for for a bit of composure. Go into the the quarter time huddle with a with a a little bit of an upswing, and that's what they were able to do. And and you know after that, you talk about Wilmot, Coleman, McKenna. They started getting in the game when Brisbane's midfield started stepping up. And they can actually play the play the game the way they want to. Yeah, yep. rebound those those high high backs. They, it's very difficult to get into the game when the opposition are going over the top of you mm. as what, consistently. What as about the ruckman? Like, uh, how how big has he been, McInerney? Like, he's been a big player and a big performer, and he was. Like, his speak of the set shots. He's a five out of tenner from thirty meters out. I reckon Oscar McInerney. He nailed two of them. Both of them. Yeah, both of them. Six clearances and. Just, they were dominant. I mean, Carlton's midfield has been the best midfield for two years. They lost clearance by, I think it was 14. Yeah, I, I can still remember when they took us into um, the players, um, the theatre, when Fags delivered Oscar McInerney his first Guernsey. When right. he, when he, I, I, I was four or five years ago, I can remember when it happened and, and the words that came out of Fags, I don't know why it stands in my memory, but he handed it across and he said, Big O... This is be this will be the first of many. You're gonna be, you're gonna play. You're gonna be a very important player for us. Mm. Something to that extent, and that's exactly what he's become. He is like there's not. He's awkward. He's difficult to handle. In a good way he's, though. Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. He's t like he would. He would be. I mean, not dissimilar to Mason Cox when you get him in a ruck contest. He's he doesn't approach it in a conventional manner. And, and it's he's tough. It's interesting, Bucks, that the, the Brisbane teams that you and I played against in the early season, they had those ruckmen that just pounded the ball forward. And he, and they got another he's, one. He's got that in him as well, which is unique. Into, uh, teams are reluctant to do that now because you're worried about it being opened up the other way. But he just sends – if he's got a control, he just whacks it forward yep. 15 minutes. So I, I, th I think he's a star. He's now a genuine top five ruckman in the game. Tell us about Vossi. Yeah, look, I – I just think Carlton ran out of legs. I, I, they were so brave. They, had, I mean, to start that game and to go up, you know, to the gabatoire to mm. a, a, a challenge that no one thought that they would even be able to sort of step up to, and then and then to start the way they did, you know, even Jordan Boyd, like the, his selection, his first ten minutes was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Two or three tackles McGovern that were stuck. Was huge. I just thought that that you know the coaches or players could not have done any better to put themselves in winning positions. Their second half was huge, but having said that, they've just lost a prelim and and they've fallen too short of of what they've all dreamt of. And the coach felt it as much as anyone. They just ran out of steam. They, they, their pressure was two oh one in the first quarter, and the next three quarters went one sixty four, one fifty nine, one sixty eight. Mm. And and that was the lowest pressure rating that they'd had since the Gold Coast game when they went you know, when they started their run, and and they really did rely contest and defence was Vossi's mantra even when they were doing poorly. Do not do not uh, deviate. Yeah, you know, mm. don't miss. I'm not going to be mis um, quoted here, or mi I'm not going to miscommunicate this here. I'm not going to get caught up in the offence. Defence is our priority, 
and I think their pressure on ball was was their first aspect of their of their good defense. So, look, I thought they were I thought they were game. I thought they were, they'd been proud. Um, they've taken their supporters on a journey, and they I think they were bested by a side that was refreshed and ready to go. And as Fags has said, had those lessons of the past that that stood them in good stead. Lastly, um, just. As you were going to, clearance is a king. Mm. You know, both of the sides, both of the the winning sides in prelims were able to dominate in yeah. that part of the ground. So Brisbane were thirty six twenty after quarter time. So plus sixteen after quarter time, and Collingwood were plus eighteen across the game, mm. and, and it has a tremendous impact on the way your back line or your forward line operate. When you win clearance, then your backs can get up, up. and aggressive set up and defend really well. They're on their front foot. They you can bounce off the back. And you can rest as you, well. You, you, you get the, a break. And the opposite if you're on the opposite end of that, you you are on the ropes. Mm. And GWS found themselves on the ropes like for a large part of that game and they they stood up extremely well, but it takes a toll. So when you're thinking they didn't get off the line, they didn't run, they didn't take the game on as much. They've been on the ropes, copping a pounding at different stages over that first three quarters. Mm. Like spoke about how good Jack Buckley was. He was spent halfway yeah. through the third quarter. He spent. He didn't not. He didn't give up. He didn't give away. But mm. he was just trying to find a way to survive because every every moment the ball came into his area, he was under fierce pressure, and it happened a lot through their clearance dominance. So it's going to be fascinating when we project forward. Who's going to build the pressure? Who's going to you know? Uh, challenge the op- the opposition defense. Clearly, we know efficiency is going to going to be important at either end of the field. Yep. But in and around the ball, we talk about the ruck battle. We'll talk about the midfield battle. There's the high so defenders, it's the brilliant. high forwards that come up and get involved in that clearance and contest is going to be where it's at, and it will set the game up for the for the victor. I'm going to get your tip before we leave at nine o'clock. And a man who sat in on some of uh, the process. Is alongside of me, Bucks. What was your involvement? Um, I was called. I was called up by Benny Gale, sort of latterly. It was probably only the, the last three weeks, um, and asked if I was uh, available and willing to sit in on the last round of interviews. So they they'd done a, the first round of interviews and a very thorough process. Um, you know, psychometric testing, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, to to get down to the final two, who was um, Andrew McQuarter and. Adam Uze. So, yeah, so to sit in there with Trent Cochin was the other guy and we weren't part of the selection panel, but just to observe. And then, mm. and then the selection panel asked us some questions, you know, for sort of half an hour after each of those, those interviews. What impressed you most about Adam Uze? Well, very clear. And well, I, I think not all of the, n- not all of his content was covered in the second interview. So it was, you, so you really are just going in blind. You can only judge what you see and you can only give a, an impression on what you see. But I, what I would say is I thought that, that Richmond were extremely thorough. Mm. Um, Uzo was, was very impressive. He, he knows, um, he knows how he wants the game played. Um, it was, a, a, they both in, in, in the, the interviews that we saw, they were both talking about how they'd set up the week, how they'd set up their coaching panels, um, and what was important Do to they them speak at, about at the beginning. Where their list is at. And what the goal should be in terms of miss that? No, that okay. must have been part of the the the, the earlier process. Do you get the impression that Richmond are in it for the now, or do you feel like they're prepared to take a step back with the list to go forward? No, that that wasn't p- okay. part of the context. What I, the context that I gleaned because I thought um, Andrew McQualter was very two very strong candidates. So was it line ball? And you'd certainly hope. Well, I don't know what the decision ended up being in terms of you know whether it was split or not, they weren't giving away a whole lot um, as they shouldn't, you know, they, they were, but there were probing questions The what I probably gleaned from it was that both, both the candidates believed that there needed to be change. And I think everyone on the panel believed that, you know, Richmond wanted to find its next evolution beyond its success of its recent times. And, um, and both the candidates were, were advocating for change, but I, I think, feel like it might have counted against Andrew mm. that he'd been there mm. for the last 10 years and, and, and been a familiar face in that success. And that hurt him in the end. I, I, th- I think that, that that was an element of it. That's not to denigrate uh, Adam Uzo because he was cl- – clearly you have to find a candidate that you believe in enough and that you feel is going to – 
going to make that a um, to bring that to fruition. So I thought they had a great incumbent candidate, um, and and they obviously had a great um, candidate from outside, and and they they opted for the guy from outside, and but I, I thought they were you know, two extremely. Uh, impressive uh, why do you young think, coaches that are that are going to do great things. Why do you think you were called in at such a late stage? Do you think that says that they were genuinely split and they needed some outside? Potentially, yeah. potentially. I think it's. I th- I find Brendan Gale to be one of the best operators going around. I find Richmond to be one of the more progressive. Uh, organisations, and I think mm. there's a reason why they've had the success that they've had. I think Damien Hardwick was a big part of that, but I don't think I don't. I think that I know that clubs go deeper than that. So I, I think to have uh, someone, some an independent, I, I, you're probably checking your bias. Mm. They might have felt like they already knew which way they were going, and that they needed to check that bias with two fresh sets of eyes one obviously a, a guy that they respect enormously from internal from their internal environment in Koch and and myself who has probably you know been around coaching and playing and and been through a few um through the ringer a few times and wanted that independent view to, ch- to test their bias potentially did it do anything for you did it light a fuse did it make did it uh, create an itch that needed uh, to be scratched well it gets you closer to it. It, it it definitely it definitely has you seeing things you know if we're on the outside looking in when you actually get on the inside you realize you know the parts of it that you love that you that you um that you that you miss and that you feel oh yeah that that's uh that would get the juices flowing. Mm. So I definitely had moments like that, but mm. not enough to not turn up this morning, mate. <laughs> <laughs> we go through the results and ask the questions, who does it speak volumes about? It's for Loop Logics, the Swiss Army knife of construction management. We will start on Friday night. Collingwood got it done by a point in a low-scoring prelim final. Bucks, who does it speak volumes about? Well, I'm going to sit well and truly on the, on the fence with this one because I, I think it – I think the game was huge. Yep. I, I I loved both sides, um, and I like them both going into the future as well. I, I I thought it was a remarkable game. I think in the end that GWS's extra week took a toll, and a, as well as as we spoke about earlier, the fact that Collingwood was so dominant at clearance that they put their backs and their midfielders under so much pressure, and their high forwards having to do all that work to get back into their their mm. back line to to protect and to to shore up, that eventually they that that pressure told, um, and that that work that they needed to do told in that last little bit. But having said that, you know GWS kept coming. Um, I um, I thought Toby Green's year was sensational. He was probably a little quiet at the end of the game. Yes, yeah. You know, but once again, a little bit around, a little bit around, you know, having to do all of that work. I mean, a, a snap that he made. If he'd have missed kicked that, and it had gone a little bit to the right of the post, it, it's a point. But it, he actually was going to go through over the black dot and still side bottom takes a mark fifteen centimeters inside the field of play. That's how marginal it was. How, like side bottom, you just you look at him and he just bobs up in those situations. Is he the smartest footballer that we have? Like you know, well, is I, he the smartest AFL footballer? Well, I can say no because Pendles is the smartest. Okay, and and Steele is right there. Steele is right there, and the two of them together. And then you put Nick Dacos as a young player yeah. who is still gaining these experiences. But you know, Toby Green's a smart player. I, I think they've got. Yeah, you know, Tom Green is a high a high IQ sort of player, but there was a time um, Pendles got run down from behind with about ten minutes to go in the middle of the ground, and he just found a way to keep the ball in. Mm, like mm. it looked like he he he'd had some prior, but he knew that he that he wasn't going to get caught holding the ball, so he just drew the stoppage. Mm. Um, and that that's a little bit of what we were just talking to, to Crispy about, sort of repeat stoppages and taking time off the clock and and not letting the ball get out. Um, so, yeah, there's a high, a high, high IQ players and still side bottom is definitely one <laughs> of those. Unbelievable scenes of the NFL. Travis Kelsey just caught a touchdown pass from Mahomes and Taylor Swift is in the box with Kelsey's mum and she's just losing it, losing her mind. So a lot of rumours, a lot of innuendo about 
that relationship. But terrific scenes there in the good. NFL. Sorry to uh, good seg- good segue. <laughs> sorry, sorry to <laughs> hijack. No, no. Uh, speaks volumes. But no, no. I, no, I, 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 I and I think um, you know, Collingwood are in great shape. That, that that one really hardens them up again going into next week. Um, Thoughts on Taylor Swift? Oh, please, mate. <laughs> Have you got tickets? No, um, I wish. What, what do you it reckon about? Heat, what do you reckon about the second game, the uh, the Brisbane? Uh, uh, game? Well, to me, it speaks volumes of Brisbane, and they're a much uh, more mature and resilient side than what they've been in the past. I, I did that game, and I thought that they're at risk of capitulating it again. And I, I say again because it's been four or five final series where it hasn't gone the way that they would have liked. I loved the calmness of the coach, and I I think he's coached in a a very controlled manner. I remember seeing him last year on the interchange bench, and he was sort of punching the ceiling of of the dugout, and he was losing a little bit of control and composure. He's been so composed this year. I spoke to Greg Swan earlier in the preseason. He said, Fags is going to go back up to the box. We think that's a better spot for him to be. I think it's been an excellent move. So I think his leadership, his composure, his calmness this year with everything that he's gone through has filtered through to the playing group. Dunkley has been a really big acquisition. I I thought he was just enormous 16 contested possessions in the role that he did on Patrick Cripps. So it just speaks volumes of Brisbane. They're they're a better defensive unit. They're a more resilient group. um, And they're a different side than what they've been in the past. And it's taken some heartbreak to get there. You spoke of Eric Hipwood and his accuracy. I spoke of Oscar McInerney for his calmness in front of goal. Joe Danaher as well had a had a shot and kicked two in the second quarter and uh, didn't didn't hesitate. So look, they're 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 right to go, Brisbane. They're, they're the most talented team. They're they're more talented than Collingwood. Does that eventuate to a win? Not often. No, sorry, not always. The, um, the irony with they that, want for nothing. The the irony with that with Brisbane is is some of their most impactful players are potentially their younger ones. Yeah, Fletcher and Coleman. Coleman was huge. And when their midfield get going, well, then those guys can can come into the, the game. McKen- some of McKenna's use, like his his creativity off the mm. back was was really strong. And when these guys get an opportunity to attack, when they get an opportunity, Will Mott in particular, is, again, when they get a, an opportunity to get on the front foot and to really rebound hard, they're as, they're as dangerous as anyone. So... Yeah, you know, and Bailey, Rayner, Zorko in the front, you know, as as well as Charlie Cameron. McCarthy's one that's got aerial presence that's underrated. So they they are a challenge to for any side. They've been a handful for every side and yep. they will be um on Saturday. Good record against Collingwood as well.